Roca has evolved policing. We were years behind, including myself. Policing has changed. It's not us versus them, not good versus bad. Everything is gray. If it wasn't for that Roca Chelsea police collaboration, we'd be in deep trouble. Police officers, too often, they're around a lot of traumatic events, whether it's serious car accidents, whether it's you know a shooting, a lot of emotional arguments, right? And they see that so much, it starts to wear them down. It starts to make them tired. And it starts to make them think the whole world is that way. The challenge with that is they may not realize what's going on with themselves, right? They may not understand that this stuff is having an impact on them. And in the training, we talk about that, and we talk about how to try to recognize what's going on with you. I was fortunate enough to be the one that was picked as the uh, police chief. I was ecstatic. I was like, finally, it happened, right? And then, coincidentally, at the same time, Molly Baldwin decides to offer me a position um, here at Roca to be the co-director of Rewire 4. I want to help police officers. I come from a family of police officers. All right, so the first section we're gonna talk about today is brain development. I'm certainly not a brain scientist, but there is some basic stuff about the brain that can be very helpful for anybody, but certainly for police officers. None of us are therapists. We talk about the theory of CBT, cognitive behavioral theory, and how you can get into spinning cycles. And then if you can notice those cycles, you're able to disrupt them and have a more emotional regulation. The class really is focused on emotional regulation, self-control, which is critical for police officers today. We're probably in there like 35 minutes. I start thinking, this, you know, like, this can work. If I can grasp it or wrap my head around what this whole theory is with Rewire 4, I think it can help. Think about when you were 18. Did you always do the smartest thing, right? We all made mistakes, right? You have to understand how you're thinking. It impacts your behavior. It impacts your feelings and how they all like work together. Now you can start understanding when you know, you're in an unhelpful cycle. If someone's being disrespectful to you, someone's not listening to you, or someone's yelling at you, is that an actual physical threat? No. But you can go into bottom brain on that side. I've lowered my blood pressure on 10 points on both sides. I don't know if that's because of this, but I know I'm more comfortable dealing with people out on the street with it because I know I'm not gonna, you know, emotionally lose control. The whole world sees what police officers do today. It's not like it was 20, well, 37 years ago when I got on this job. It was different. Recording devices have put officers under a spotlight and they're accountable for their behavior and they're held to a different standard, a higher standard because of the power and authority that they have. And I've done a lot of interviews with people that wanted to be officers. And that's one of the questions we always ask them, like, why do you want to be a police officer? And the answer 99% of the time is I want to help people. But sadly, a year or two down the road, because of all the trauma, because of all the negativity, they may lose that. But if we can reset them and get them back to, you know, thinking about their purpose, why they want to be a police officer, it can help guide their behavior and it can help with emotional regulation. It's made me stay on the job that most people retire after 32 years, and I'm happily in my 38th year because of the mindset that Roca has instilled in me and how policing should be. And they transformed the way we look at it through mutual training together. Just their philosophy is our philosophy now.